All right, welcome back. It's still uh, The Breakfast right here on Plus TV Africa. Now time to uh, dive into the newspapers and see what they have for us. Well, it's quite some interesting headlines. Uh, J.D. Johnson, a senior lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism, is uh, our guest on this segment this morning. Uh, J.D. Johnson, thank you very much for your time today. Good morning. Good morning, good morning to you and good morning to everyone in Tura Salvador. All right, all right. Okay. Might you be in the nation's uh, capital this morning? No, I'm in Lagos. Uh, well, the nation's capital is a no good area for most people. If you listen to the news, you will hear how Abuja has been under siege from, from terrorists, where you have terrorists attacking the military, military formation between Boma Rock and Abuja, like the border of Niger State and and Abuja, then you know we are in for, for, for more than we are bargaining for. Hmm. All right, L let's uh, start with uh, leadership. Uh, leadership Friday is what they call it, um, with these headlines. The big one there, um, they're sticking with insecurity and unfolding situation around the country with this headline, rising insecurity, bombing terrorists only way out. Bombing terrorists only way out. Aerofi tells federal government bombing terrorists only way out. Aerofi uh, tells federal government maybe they're, they're not uh, aware that that is what they should do. And the writers to that uh, headline bandits ambush kill soldiers at Zuma Rock as military declares Abuja safe, claims killing 88 terrorists in Buari, others uh, to probe soldiers' alleged involvement in ransom collection. Nigerians tired gravitating towards self-help NSA. It was a statement that uh, came after that all-important meeting they had uh, yesterday. Of course, um, there's a picture of uh, some of the Federal Executive Council members after their meeting uh, yesterday. More headlines from the Leadership Friday. President promises better working conditions for judges. Our work for Nigeria's unity, new can president. Huh. Is he telling us uh, something there? Uh, allow me to develop your region, PMB, begs Niger Deltons. Allow me to develop your region, PMB, uh, begs Niger, Niger Deltons. Court sentences Hanifa's killer, Tanko, to death by hanging. It's a story that I'm sure many have uh, taken the eyes of Hanifa, the uh, girl who was killed in northern Nigeria uh, some time ago. Umahi's brother rejects PMB's appointment as RMAFC scribe. He put up the a nicely worded letter um, uh, to reject that statement saying his uh, that appointment saying the role is for job seekers and he knows what he wants he's not seeking such a job let's move to the next newspaper the punch this morning has uh, its attention and uh, the, its big space uh, dedicated to the politics of 2023 with this headline the kicker presidential primaries Buhari's ex-minister asks court to disqualify Tinubu Atiku and has following writers in Wajiuba faults APC, PDP primaries over statutory delegates vote buying, says former Lagos governor ex-VP bribed delegates with dollars. Okay, interesting one. It's coming from an insider, not just in the administration, but also participant um, in that uh, uh, that primary. At the top of that front page, 78,549 aggrieved contributors to dump PFAs or dump PFAs transfer 227 billion naira. 78,549 aggrieved contributors dump PFAs transfer 227 billion naira. FG begins implementation of NDDC forensic audit. Uh, I'm sure some of you almost uh, forgot about that one. 4.7 million to get SIMS after FG's call ban. 4.7 million to get SIMS after FG's call ban. ADAX or ADAX workers begin strike. All production sheds 22,000 barrels per day. Some unwelcome news in these times. Passengers groan as one hour flight hits 75,000 naira. I think last time we checked, it was about 60 to 65, 66,000 naira if you booked early. Uh, Buhari's ex, okay, we've, we've taken this already. Killings, lawmakers knock Buhari, uh, president meets security chiefs. Lawmakers knock Buhari, president meets security chiefs. 
Lagos leads as monkeypox spreads to 26 states. Kano is called proprietor to die for killing people. Kano is called proprietor to die for killing people. We struggle to feed Toby, pay her fees, uh, Musa's father. And don't forget uh, that uh, she's making some statements, of course, about her family and some of the difficulties she went through. She's also said, for instance, that her father would burn her, uh, her sporting uh, equipment and her shoes and all that. She'd have to use her mother to lie that she was going uh, to church and then she'd go train at the stadium. But the father is saying we struggle to feed uh, the girl and we also struggle to pay her fees. Um, governorship ticket tears Delta PDP apart. Ibori Okoa part ways. Uh, seems there is a, a rumble in the jungle and all is not well. Let's move over to the next newspaper. This is The Nation on Friday. It has its big headline, Impeachment. APC moves to stop PDP lawmakers gang up. Impeachment. APC moves to stop PDP lawmakers gang up. And it's an interesting uh, choice of words by the newspaper. The writers to that headline, Akachiku CD, Flay, Opposition Senators, Reps, or Flay Opposition Senators, Reps, Threats to Move Against uh, Buhari. It is political, says Omishore, and ruling parties, legislators to meet on Sunday. Still with the nation newspaper, Security Council admits Nigerians seeking self-help. Uh, writers to that headline says, no cause for alarm, DHQ shows Abuja residents. Quite interesting there. Rivers to vote only PDP governor, says government. Uh, telecom firms reject 5% tax payment. At the top of that front page, a laughing ruling house sum summons meeting over illegal aspirants. Federal government to sanction BBC TV or Trust TV for glorifying bandits. Of course, the BBC uh, recently released a, a special which has premiered on YouTube, quite interesting, called uh, The Bandits of Zamfara. Very eye-opening and the federal government has reacted. Uh, in this uh, case, the uh, paper says they're threatening to sanction the BBC uh, and Trust TV for what they say is a glorification of bandits. Hanifa's killer teacher to die by hanging, 109 billion naira fraud, suspended AGF Idris gets a 5 billion naira bill. Non-remittance of dollars by NNPC behind Naira's crisis, says CBN. Uh, we are uh, foreseeing some inter-agency or inter uh, uh tension right there, even though the NNPC is a company these days. And finally, from the nation, Abiodo sends five commissioner nominees to assembly and WIAC jacks up fees. So parents should expect to pay more for the awards. The final paper on our table this morning is Daily Trust. Um, it has a picture of that um, meeting of President Buhari uh, with the uh, security chiefs at the presidential villa in Abuja. But it dedicates its uh, major headline space to um, the economy and it says uh, Naira depreciation takes toll on investors, worsens uncertainty. And the writers to that currency down by 11% in one week. It'll negatively impact prices of commodities experts and local content, economic diversification, the way out. More from the Daily Trust. Uh, insecurity. Nigerians have lost confidence in us, gravitating towards self-help, FG. IDPs may join terrorists over poverty, dwindling resources, Zulum. The governor of Borno State saying that Hanifa, killer proprietor Abdul Malik, sentenced to death by hanging. Terrorist attack military checkpoint near Abuja. The PDP reps back senators on Buhari's sacking. And inflation, inflation wake hikes fee to 18,000 naira. These are signs of the times. Now let's uh, bring in at this point Jilly Johnson. Uh, uh, Jilly Johnson, which of these headlines would you like to, uh, to start with? You pick one. Uh, G.D. Jensen, can you hear us? All right. Okay. Um, can you yes. hear me? Fantastic. Yes. So which one can entices you, you? Which one would you like to start with? I think we should start, we should start with security. Okay. All right. So um, uh, there was a meeting. Uh, yeah. 
the meeting of the president with the uh, National Security Council, and of course, the uh, the you know the government coming out to say that Nigerians are, are resorting to self-help. Is that an admission of um, a failure? You think? And at the same time, the HQ telling Abuja residents that they are secure. Exactly. So you see the mixed message coming from the government. You go also see from one of the major headlines where the leadership, where the governor of Kaduna State said bombing terrorists is, is, is the only option. My, my take on this is how many things would the president have with the Security Council for us to resolve this problem? Someone said if you don't want to solve a problem or you want to waste people's time, call for meetings. Because I've not seen any strategic options that the various security meetings that have been called are brought to the table to resolve this problem. You will recall um, over time, people said that well, the president should change the the leadership of, of our security architecture. It took him a while before changing them, at least for six months. Then he changed them. Nothing really happened after he changed them. I think this is about the thought set that are working with him. The question we need to ask is what is really, what is really wrong? Uh, because people are not held accountable for whatever offices they, they, they've been appointed to or they've been elected in. Because Let's take the Kuji prison jailbreak. Not, there's not a single person that has been fired. Not a single person has been suspended. Not a single person has been arrested. The law had, the minister said, when well, they've submitted their report, Ed will roll. Should we wait in eternity for Ed to start rolling before we resolve this particular security security issue? It, 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 has become, it has become a political weapon now because you, you, you recall in the course of this week, and it's part of the headline, in fact, it was the major headline of the nation newspaper, which is a, 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 a ruling party leaning publication that PDP lawmakers gang up, that ABC lawmakers will stop the PDP lawmakers gang up against the president because the issue of the security has led to some senators to walk out of the plenary session and to also call for the impeachment of the president given the six six week deadline for the security issue to be resolved. Otherwise the president will be will be impeached. And whether we like it or not, one of the fundamental oath of office for public office that either elected or appointed is to protect one, the territorial integrity of Nigeria. Two, lives and properties of Nigeria. Have those, are those in office, have they fulfilled that office? That's the question we need to ask. Every Nigerian, there's no Nigerian that can travel anywhere with his two eyes closed. One, there's no Nigerian that can travel anywhere without, without resorting to self help Even the military chief themselves have said it. The Nigerians have, have resorted to self-help, self-help of going spiritual. So probably you need to consult your, your religious leader, depending on whichever religion you, you practice, for, for, for spiritual insurance. So where, because the state has not provided you with the assurance that you, <coughs> you could travel anywhere, you could go anywhere and transact your business and go about your normal life without any fear of being terrorized by non-state actors that have even become more powerful than state actors. You could see the boldness, the boldness for terrorists, one, to threaten to abduct, to attack the president, the governor of Kaduna State, and because of the, the governor of Kaduna State came on here to tell us that even the president is not aware that, that, that there is a threat to attack or abduct him by this terrorist group. He will tell you that the, 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 the kind of network that is around the president, it is the president that we are what is really going on in Nigeria. These are the questions we need, we need to ask. And it's a, it calls for cause of concern for every, for every one of us. Hmm. Uh, I, I mean, still with the Daily Trust, it also um, 
uh, uh, you know, talk some more about security, particularly with the attack uh, in Niger State, not far from Abuja, the FCT, uh, a town uh, called uh, Madala. Madala is a few kilometers away from Zuba, the paper says, along the Abuja Kaduna Highway. But of course, Zuma Rock, Rock can be seen from uh, the Abuja Niger, uh, Abuja Mina um, Road. So we're told that uh, some soldiers were reportedly killed uh, when Boko Haram terrorists raided that a military checkpoint around the Zuma Rock in Niger State on Thursday night. Um, it's uh, coming closer and closer and closer uh, to the seat of power. What are your thoughts on this, this increasing uh, news of attacks of soldiers and killing of military personnel uh, around Abuja, the periphery of Abuja or you know, states bordering Abuja? Till now, we've not heard of a uh, rescue of those who were abducted or are missing. The soldiers are missing from the one in Buari Council area of the FCT against uh, the brigade uh, guard or the guards of brigade or brigade of guards rather um, uh, last weekend. Um, Kofi, you recall about two years ago and last year where we had Iswa, people that called them. Boko Okwaram, they are, they, are, they are begging the issue. They are begging the question. When it was reported, it's there in the newspaper. I, I tell people, if once you want to know what happened inside, you just go and read the newspaper or you get um, issues that have been reported via the media over time. We, we knew from report that in Niger, at the point in time, these were established in territory that they were collecting taxes. They planted their flags in some local government in, in, in Niger. And Niger shares boundary with Abuja. We knew the government said, said something about, 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 about this. So you shouldn't come to anyone and be surprised because when there was an uncle, when Boko Haram was decimated in the northeast, we had reports that they moved to Niger. And there was nothing that was done concerning that the issue was politicized. Assurances were given by political leaders to that effect. Now we are now seeing that the chicken has come to roost. The chickens have come to roost. And now we are seeing the implication of not paying attention to the challenges that people that lived in territories controlled by Israel. In, 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 in Niger are fitting. So it shouldn't be surprising to anybody that we have to have it. Besides, we are a nation that rewards criminality. You have non state actors that have terrorized the state. And then you said they have repented and you will get them back into the site. We have non state actors that have used terror on communities and you exchange you, you exchange their gun for Naira. You ask them to come and submit their AK forty seven and you give them two two million two million naira. So what do you expect? All right. Uh, uh, we have uh, Daily Trust devoting the bulk of its front page coverage to um, the economy. Uh, with that big headline, Naira depreciation takes toll on investors and worsens uncertainty. Naira depreciation takes toll on investors, worsens on uncertainty. It's so talking about you know the fact that the Nigerian, Nigerian currency has been down. I mean, 11% in one week. I saw an article someone just putting something online reminding us that just a week ago it was at 6:30. You know, now we're talking about 700, 706, 710, some say 711. Um, it's, it's quite a, a huge shock in the last one week. But I'd like us to, to look at the nation newspaper and what the man charged with handling and midwifing in Nigeria's uh, macroeconomy with macroeconomic um, uh, policies like the interest rate and all that, what he's saying. This is um, Gordon Mayfield, a former presidential aspirant. Uh, on the platform of the, of the APC, and if you, oh, if you forgot, he's still the, um, the chairman of uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria. Now, this is what the nation says, just a few lines from that paper. It says, um, uh, non-remittance of dollars to foreign reserves, or reserves, rather, uh, by the Nigerian National Petroleum, 
Corporation, which is now Company Limited, NMPC, is responsible for the Naira's free fall in the official and parallel markets. This is what the Central Gov uh, Bank of Nigeria says. So given a reason for what we, we see, the 11% drop in the value of the currency against the dollar. They're yeah, saying that uh, the NMPC is not remitting um, yeah, foreign reserves uh, by the, uh, in the, from the oil, and oil sector to, to it. You know, so what's going on here in your in your in your analysis, um, you know, with the uh, NNPC? There's nothing. There's nothing going on. Now you now have an NNPC uh, privatized according to the government. When NNPC was controlled by the government, NNPC was the government within the government because NNPC does not do due diligence when it comes to remittance of its revenue. So relevant agencies of government that need to. You know, basically, the value of Naira will fall when you are not handing enough foreign exchange to back your local currency. So there will be a free fall for your currency. And that's what we have seen. That's, that, that, that has been a major factor. This action of NNPC has been a major factor for the new virtues of Naira, not 10 years ago, not 20 years ago, that's always been what has characterized NNPC approach to Nigerian economy. And that's why some have advocated over, the, over time that the government needs to take away its hand of NNPC and go the Saudi Arabian experiment, which actually was the first experiment by Petronas in Brazil. All right. Where yeah. government divests its interest in the state-owned oil energy company and allow private participation and private, private, private ownership. And until we do that genuinely, Naira will take a free fall. Then, what has this? What has been the role of the central bank in ensuring compliance, in drawing the attention of relevant bodies to beat? Well, they can't, have, they can't pay the attention because the, pre, the, pre, uh, the, the governor of Central Bank and the chairman of Central Bank himself was busy running after an industry office. He was busy running after the office of the president. Mm -hmm. So why would he pay attention to the job he's it's, 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 it's appointed to, to, to do in the first instance? Such person should have been fired in the first instance. Mm -hmm. Because once you aspire for office, it means that you are no longer interested in the office you are occupying. That one. Then, too, don't forget if you check one of the stories in the newspaper where an ex minister has taken the presidential candidate of APC and PDP to court, challenging their emergence through corrupt means. Don't forget that the primaries that, just, that we have just conducted witness exchange in dollars. Dollars were used massively, so there was a huge demand for dollar, and that its effect has affected this. They are not talking about that. If you knew what transpired in the primaries across the length and breadth of Nigeria, for the House of Assembly, for the House of Rep, for the Senate seat, for the gubernatorial seat, for the, if you knew the exchange and the demand for dollars by the political class in order to buy themselves into public office, you will know that, apart from NNPC, there's also the, 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 the effect of the primaries on the value of our, of our, of our currency. Hmm. It, it's, it's it, quite was, it was an open secret that dollars, yeah. was being, dollars yeah. were being exchanged during this primary. It, it's and quite... one of the participants mm -hmm. has gone ahead to go to court. Hmm. Interesting. It's quite strange. I mean, uh, why do you bus? We'll look at that as we go on. Uh, that, uh, the, you know, the foreign reserve, which is um, uh, what the entire nation uh, is, the, is, is depending on, uh, has dwindled, you know, to less than $500,000 in the space of some months, moving from, you know, some, some, some few billions of dollars. It was in the news recently. And one wonders why the NNPC is not remitting, you know, these, uh, the foreign exchange into the foreign Reserve of the country, if that is what you, you will make the you wonder strong. why, where the accountant general of the federation was able to help himself allegedly with one person, one individual, 
with 109 billion. Is it the only one within the system? It's not possible for you to steal money, public money, without connivance of others, without the knowledge of others, without others helping themselves out. So if one individual could help himself with 109 billion, what are others helping themselves with? Mm. Now, before now, and those that have taken it on Two, you record the midnight gate, the, the money with pension, the pension fund. You see, when they said they are fighting corruption, the question we ask is, what system have you put in place to ensure that due diligence, transparency, and, pro and it becomes pretty difficult for an individual to dip his hand into public funds and just help himself in this manner? It's, it's quite sad. I mean, uh, on, on Tuesday, there was an abridged communique uh, released, um, you know, uh, showing that, uh, uh, you know, released by the FAC, all right, uh, showing that the excess crude account had shrunk uh, in, in, in May, May, June, July, uh, from $35.377 million uh, to 376 point, uh, $1,655.09. Uh, dollars. That's that is dollars It's just um, you know, in economic terms, it's just paltry, you know. And uh, I was thinking what about it. Yeah, I was thinking about it. One of the what problems. Are, what was the major thing that happened in Nigeria in May? Okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. The the primaries. <laughs> the what primaries. Is primaries. In May? <laughs> so what 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 other excuse do you need to? to so they had the primaries in May. They expended the money on delegates to buy themselves into office for 2023. And then from June, they started going there to borrow money to pay salaries because they've expended all the money they have on mm. primaries. It's, uh, it's you don't, quite, need, quite you don't need rocket science to understand these things. It's quite sad. I, I, was, I was watching some material yesterday um, you know, which was talking about how the the uh, the Russian currency has been able to remain strong, and despite the expectations of you know Biden and his words that the the Russian ruble would um, would become a, a rubble, you know, as it were, a waste. Uh, the ruble has rather become the best performing currency in the world this year. And one of the things they said is the Russians have refused to sell their gas in dollars. They are selling their gas in rubles, so the demand by the uh, people who are taking off, off taking the, the gas, who are buying the gas from the Russians, they will go out with their dollars, their euros, their pounds, you know, uh, their yuan or yen to, to look for the Russian ruble. And the demand for that yeah. currency to buy the gas is, is, is making it, you know. Exactly. So I'm wondering why we can't, Europe, we can't think about something like this here. And Europe is highly dependent on Russian gas. China is highly dependent on Russian gas. So, if, you, if foreign currencies are running after your currency, your currency will appreciate. If you don't appreciate, at least it will, it, will, it will be stable and people can do businesses with you. But in this situation, Naira is not stable because it is Naira that is running after dollars. And it's not dollars that is running after Naira. And then you know our public official. They are penchant for dollars. It's unbelievable. Hmm. Their desire and love for dollars. Hmm. While we were growing up, well, you could buy dollar in the post office. You could spend Nigerian Naira on the streets of London. Really, sir? What happened? It's It's... It's, it's even Nigerian money that money order that back in the post office was sent to people in London and they were exchanged to pound sterling. So some people are saying that yeah. even, even the absolute strike is also contributing to the pressure on the Naira uh, as more parents are, are being forced to send their awards to school abroad. Do, 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 you, do you agree with that? I agree with that. I, I've told you too much Naira is running after dollar. And then you know the law of 
demand and supply. You know the law of demand and supply. And then you know what your supply cannot meet the demand. What happens? The prices of goods will go up. Now the prices for dollar to naira go up. And what happens to basic cost of living? The basic cost of living will also rise. That will lead to what? Inflation. It's, it's, it's a elementary economics. You don't need an economic to, to, to our listeners at home, to our viewers at home, to those that are those that are watching us via whatever platforms. It's, it's clear. Hmm. And you are talking about that. What about their own taste? The principal actors that want to rule this country when they that the major leading parties. They are candidates. Where do they seek medical help? All right. All right. Uh, let, let's move on, uh, Jimmy Johnson, to the punch. Uh, it, it devotes its major headline to um, the uh, the moves by uh, Chukwe Meka Nwajiba, former minister of state for education, who, like Senator Gorsedak Pabio, is not eager to off his mic. Remember the off your mic uh, episode right there, the House of Reps. Um, he's, he's accusing the major, you know, uh, presidential candidates, two of the major candidates of... Um, uh, of corruption, you know, um, he's faulting the APC PDP primaries, like you said, over statutory delegates and vote buying. He says uh, the former Lagos governor at, uh, at uh, uh, Tinubu, and then Abu Atiko Boka, who is a former vice president, bribed delegates with uh, with votes. Uh, so he's uh, filed an originating summons uh, uh, before federal high court in Abuja, seeking an order declaring him uh, himself Mwajiuba. Uh, this is Incorporated Trustees of Rights for All International. It's a group alongside him. They filed uh, uh, that originating summons, uh, uh, declaring, seeking an order declaring Wajiba as the authentic uh, presidential candidate of the APC. This is what the paper is saying. Well, it's, it's, it's an off the mark situation. <laughs> the corruption there. And then you also know that the media also developed the off the mark situation to a particular story that relates to the of the back situation in terms of the prominence and attention which he has been given to that story. Calling one of the newspapers, NNP, the federal government starts for a sick audit. I think that should have been one of the, the major headlines for the newspaper today. Because the forensic audit of NND NDC where the chairman collapsed. Um, and nothing has been added with respect. With respect to this story, about how would they declare what you as the quality not participating in the process by appearing on the date of the election? Two, he did not secure any vote. He did not come second. If anything should happen to the principal actor, except you want to have the emo status, where the person that came for is declared the governor by the Supreme Court. We don't know who that's when Wajuba can actually become, can become the presidential candidate of APC. Our candidates, even if you disqualify the leading candidate of the PDP and APC, for APC, it could be a Chibu because he came second in that primary. For PDP, Wike, because Wike came second in that primary. Wonderful. Both of them are from River State, and both of them are former governors of River State and erstwhile ministers of the of the Federal Republic. So, if you have that scenario, that's the likelihood of what what will likely happen if Atiku is qualified and Tinubu is qualified. Is there is the person that came second in the primaries that will automatically take me take the ticket? Wajuba is not oh, okay. Wajuba is from Mimo State. Probably is thinking of the. More, more, more experiment by the Supreme Court that declared that the present governor as the governor haven't come forth in the, in the election. So, they're having that hope. And then, there's nothing against someone having hope. After all, the name of the governor is hope. So, he can hope too. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> it's really God can make it to be useful. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, a funny one. <laughs> All right. So since you, you, you brought up the forensic audit, of course, that's still in the punch newspaper at the top top left corner where the President Buhari said to have begun the implementation of the NDDC uh, forensic audit report. Let's just look at that very quickly. Uh, the paper says the, um, the President said his administration had taken uh, started taking steps in line with the uh, recommendations of the NDDC uh, forensic audit report submitted to him in September 2021. Uh, he also raised hopes that the much-awaited appointment of a board of directors of the commission would begin soon, you know, is what um, he's saying. Another paper, um, you know, put it this way. I think it's still uh, uh, something that we should look at just in relation uh, to this particular story, saying the president is asking uh, the Niger Delta to give him a chance to develop their region. Um, so I want to just talk about these two very quickly. Well, um, the report was submitted in September. Yes, September to, to yeah. July is one year. And we begin, the president said it will begin soon, it will not start it. So less than a year to the end of his administration, decisive action have not been taken to the review of um, that commission. And then, also less than a year to the end of his administration, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is appealing to his citizens that they should allow him to do what is elected by the people. I don't know how to put that. That itself speaks for itself. Because uh, I can't understand why um, the president needs to beg Niger Deltans, appeal to Niger Deltans, I prefer the word, I prefer the word I appeal to Niger Deltans to allow them to do the sincerity of purpose is what you want to do. They will not oppose you. There's nobody that is against development. All right, all right. So all as right. far as I'm concerned, we are complaining about the, the fall in Naira, non-implementation of government policies. This is the this is the side effect that you see that affects Naira. And you recall when this administration came into power in 2015, it took them close to six months before they could put a private executive council in place. And we have seen the consequences of that in action by the president. Because time is a convertible resource. Once it is lost, it can never be regained. That's just it. Hmm. All right. All right. This government seems to be too slow to action. All right. All right. All right. We, we, we have to uh, leave it at that, J.D. Johnson, quite interesting analysis. Uh, from you. We're looking forward to the next one when you join us uh, sometime soon. We appreciate your time, Jilly Johnson, the senior uh, lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Thank you for your time. Namaste. Thank you. <laughs> right. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll talk business up next, but before that, uh, today uh, happens to be an interesting day with uh, lots of records in history. So let's go back in time as we bring you Today in History. We'll be back on the other side.